All right, it is time to introduce our first assignment. So one way you can get introduced always, and you can look ahead, is to look at assignment sheets on our Canvas page. And because this is an assignment, not just an exercise, we have a, a dedicated assignment sheet to it. It's just a one page summary of the assignment. It's a fantasy landscape. It should absolutely be no smaller than 300 pixels per inch at eight by 10 inches. But what I'm going to create is something that's closer to 11 by 14 inches, even up to 13 by 19 inch at 350 pixels per inch because it, it's better to work larger than smaller, right? In order to composite it fully, you need to have a minimum of five reference images. That shouldn't be a problem. You usually will end up with closer to 10 at the end of this process, but you need at least five very separate elements uh, composited together to create your original landscape. Like all assignments, it's gonna be graded by me out of three points, right? The only way to get zero points is to turn in nothing by the deadline. <laughs> and then if you turn in nothing by the deadline, there's no way to go back and, and resubmit that project. It's just, it's kind of dead to you. And the reason I do that is because if you do that professionally, you just don't work for that client again. So you always want to acknowledge the deadline, even if it's not your best work or your most finished work. If you turn something in by the deadline, even if it's just your initial sketch, or even if it's just a picture of your dog, but it's titled the right way in the right album, it shows me that you're aware of the assignment and you're working on it, right? And you have lab hours and you have the videos and you have resources. So even though you'll just get one point, which is not a passing grade, you can then go back later in the semester and resubmit it. Uh, earning two points is for something that meets all the requirements. So it's a composited landscape. If you have a sketch, it has at least five elements, but it, it needs work. You know, it, it could use a lot of finesse to become really engaging as art. I'll put in the comments what where I think your time could be best spent to improve it. And it's not portfolio, you know, ready yet. And then to get three out of three points, it meets the requirements and it does everything you can with your skill at this point to engage the viewer as a portfolio piece, as an art piece that's worth their time, you know, not just a learning exercise. Uh, because this is our first assignment, this is pretty structured. You know, you're not allowed to draw or paint. You're not allowed to use a whole lot of outside techniques other than what I show you. We are digitally collaging a landscape together, but we'll also be learning how to change colors, how to change lighting, how to add texture, um, how to add uh, kind of fog effects and, and what are called texture fills. Uh, we're gonna learn a lot about selecting, a lot about filling in, clone stamping, lots of little fixes. But this is much more of a technical exercise than a conceptual one. So don't hang yourself up too much on exactly what your idea is for the landscape. It's important for you to just get started and play with it. And the quality of reference you find is gonna have a lot to do with what you end up doing. So if you're married to an idea before you start looking for high quality reference, you might get really disappointed because you'll have a hard time finding it. Like those of you who chose a hard to find cartoon for your cartoon jumble had more limited resources, right? So just working the technique will help a lot. Okay, then you can also always go to Photo Bucket and you can look under Digital One Assignments and see both past student examples of Assignment One and past instructor examples. And this is just our first of compositing. We're gonna get practice compositing creatures next and then compositing creatures into the landscape next. So if we look at the instructional examples, this will show you kind of my expectations for next class. We are going to pick a theme today. So already in your sketchbook, you can write down what the theme is that you wanna do, right? And then you are going to look for reference. So for this theme, we have the desert. We had um, in a time frame that was like ancient civilizations and the circumstance was is gonna be dusk with a starry sky. And then I started looking for references and I found certain things I liked. And then I made a, a horizontal version of the composition and a vertical composition. And then this is the one that I settled on, right? And no, it, it didn't have the starry sky, but it was kind of dusk and it, you know, looked ancient. So it's based on the reference you found. This was like an old ghost town. 
vertical format, on and on. What you'll notice about all of these examples is even though they can look quite dramatic, they don't have anything that's what's called a figurative element in them. Nothing that you would expect to be moving just looking at it. And that's because these landscapes need to function as backdrops to later creatures that we put into them. So you don't want to have any living things in there, like creatures that would be crawling around. Plants and things are fine. But when something's too active, like this one isn't a great example because you've got this little kind of spaceship thing, you expect that to be moving if you're going to have other things moving in it. So try to limit it to non-dynamic elements, right? Whether it's in a cave, whether it's a cityscape. Even waterfalls are a little tricky because when we animate, then we actually have to animate the waterfalls as well. So think about things that look like a landscape and are kind of timeless without having to move. And that's going to work out better. Okay, so what do you do in your sketchbook to get started? And then how do we start searching? So I'm going to use a digital sketchbook just so I can document it in these videos. But you would just do this in your regular sketchbook. And if you want to draw digitally, you certainly can. Come on. There we go. And so when I just do sketches, I just stay with a very standard uh, landscape resolution. I'll usually go to the print settings and just do the legal, you know, eight and a half by 14 inches by 300 pixels per inch with a white background. And then I'll usually turn it, go into image canvas size, not canvas size, sorry, image, uh, image rotation. I'll just turn it on its side. And this is like the middle of my sketchbook, right? And then I'll just use my tablet, my brush tool, and I'll create a new layer. And I'll use a pressure sensitive brush at about 40 pixels at a slightly low opacity, like 70. And now I can pick the theme. So what should the theme of my landscape be? Well, I've been playing with Jericho's Raft of the Medusa. So I like, and I haven't done an example of something on the open ocean. So I think that might be fun, like a nautical theme. Not underwater, I've done that, but like on the water, right? So you want to think of, yeah, what are the big kind of geographic things? So what would be interesting in a fantasy to have, because you don't need to follow any kind of reality with the ocean. So I want ocean. I want maybe like coral towers. I'm just thinking out loud. I want um, big rocks. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think I want like cities or anything. I think I want it to look old and haggard. So what should the sky look like? like storm clouds. Then I, I like to throw something kind of weird in there usually, like a food item. So maybe rutabagas. I'm not even sure how to spell it, right? Like turn up like shapes and things. They look like sea creatures. And now I have to think, okay, well, what time of day should it be? And sunrise and sunset are always really dramatic, right? So to be middle of the night is going to be kind of dark, but maybe if there's a lot of light effects and stuff, that could be interesting to you. So I think I want morning light. Now, I don't know how many suns there will be in this fantasy, right? So I get to define what that is. And then do I want it to be a fantasy landscape on a place like Earth, or do I want it to be in a different solar system, different physics, different, you know, light effects, different everything. Gravity is different, you know, mountains are floating. I get to decide that. So maybe, I don't think I've ever actually done this, so maybe some floating mountains. 
but I'll have to find my own way to make that interesting. Okay, so once you're exploring your theme, I want you to, to maybe mark with a star some of the search terms that are going to be helpful. Because we're going to be looking mostly for photographs, like very representational, clean images, and at high resolution. So now we're going to find reference. And we want the reference for this to be larger than 3,000 pixels, which is close to 10 megapixels. So this is bigger than we use for our cartoon jumble because we want to be able to print this landscape a little bit larger. Okay, so now I'm going to save this. That's how I start my sketches. Okay, now once I find my reference, I, I want you to do two drawings. One that is landscape format, wider than it is tall, not extreme. You think of a postcard. And one that is portrait format, taller than it is wide. But before you start sketching in, like I might already have my idea of where things should go, I want to find what reference is available because I'm not allowed to draw and paint on this. I have to composite it all from found pixels. Now, if I'm really missing out on something, I could go buy some rutabagas from the store. I can go arrange them at my house. I can take digital photos of them and have high quality, you know, larger than 3000 pixel reference I can use along with what I can find. But for this project, as long as we have at least five references, we are allowed to, to source it from other artists for our educational use. Yeah, so 3,000 pixels or bigger. So one way we can go is for Google Images, right? Can you make it exactly 3,000 or is the only option for five? You want, you want as close to 3,000 as possible and you want larger than is better than smaller than. So Google Images is where you're going to find the most, but you're also going to find the most garbage, right? So let's just look for something pretty straightforward, like mountains. When I search for mountains in Google Images, it gives me, you know, probably millions of results. So I want to limit it just like I did for Cartoon Jumble to the largest size possible. But even then, very few of these are more than 3000. So I just kind of hover. And then this one at one dimension is larger than 3000. This one at both dimensions is larger than 3000. But it's also kind of limited in color. This one is, is nice, though. 4,000 by 3,200. So you'll see that, that 3,000 is kind of a threshold that really can be tricky to get, but can be very helpful. It will give you the best quality. And it will give you the most options. Now, I'm, even if that were big enough, I wouldn't want to use something with waterfalls in it because I don't want anything that I would expect to be moving. This is like a background plate. So think of this as something that you're going to show on a stage and then have uh, things happen in front of later on in the class. You also want your reference to be not so dramatically lit. We can add drama with the lighting and the coloring. We don't want it to already be forced on us. OK, so you see I spend a lot of time looking at images that aren't actually very good. Right. And then the ones that are large enough, I'm opening them into a new tab. And then I say open image in new tab. And then I can actually check their quality. And then sometimes they're awful like that, like highly uh, pixelated. Not good images. Same with this one. So these are people that that uh, forced them to be bigger. So you really do have to vet your images. Now this one, a little bit better. There we go. Seeing it at full size, nice and crisp. Right. Even though because it's a low light, the ISO is a little grainy, but that's okay. So that's my first 
reference that might be